What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here with yet another video for you guys today. Some more information about Paolo Fonseca for you guys today, seeing as he is looking like he is going to be taking the helm at Tottenham Hotspur um, very, very soon. And we've got a Roma enthusiast uh, to bring you on today uh, to give you all the lowdown on Mr. Fonseca. And let's bring him in right now. His name is Mr. Jack Farr. Jack, welcome to the channel. How are you? Good. How are you? How are you? How are you guys? Yeah, I mean, we're good. I mean, taking us back to the next, last three weeks, we were going for Pochettino, Antonio Conte, and now it looks as though we are settling on Paolo Fonseca. I mean, seeing as you are a Roma enthusiast, give us your kind of a load on, on how he's been at Roma the last two years. So, um, first of all, I think in um, 2021, we're, we're set, we're dead set on stats, right? And we're dead set on, you know, results and, and, and kind of things of that nature. Um, mm. And what I would say to you is the situation which Paolo Fonseca has been in at Roma has not been a good one. Um, so they moved from American owners, uh, uh, Jim Palotta, uh, and that's changed hands recently to the Friedkins, which are also American owners. And uh, Paolo Fonseca has obviously come in during this transition period where also the director of football, um, who, who you guys may be aware of, uh, Monchi, uh, who mm -hmm. was at Sevilla, um, left kind of the state of the squad in, in not, a great, not a great position. So my main thing, and I think uh, the, the reason why, you know, I've got like 300 or so followers on Twitter. I'm not, nothing to brag about here. But I think the reason why some people have reached out to me about it is because, yeah, I understand the disappointment. Antonio Conte is a better manager than Paolo Fonseca. Like, let's not let's not get it twisted. I, I understand the disappointment. But what I would say to you is, if you gave me a Roma fan starting the 2021 to 22 season, if you asked me which manager I'd prefer, Jose Mourinho or Paolo Fonseca, I'd tell you I'd prefer Paolo Fonseca. Wow. Wow, well, and why do you think that is? Because obviously your club has decided to not renew Fonseca's contract at the end of last season after finishing seventh. Um, we obviously sacked um, Jose Mourinho in, in April, and we have now decided to kind of swap managers. <laughs> but why would you prefer Fonseca over Mourinho going into next season? What was it about Fonseca's time at Roma that convinced you he's a, he's still a good manager? Well, well, the thing is, um, the reason why I think he'll work well at Tottenham is, is you guys know this a hell of a lot better than me. The main man you have to please at Spurs is Mr. Mr. Daniel Levy, right? Um, and obviously, unfortunately, as much as the Jose Mourinho's and the Contes of the world, these guys are not going to mesh well with, with Daniel Levy over the long term, you would imagine. Paolo Fonseca um, had a squad that was injured <laughs> basically for the entire season. The squad quality was probably eighth, maybe even ninth best in uh, Serie A last year. Um, and he just had all these issues to do with, you know, guys, I'll, I'll, I'll give you kind of a few things to, that stand out to me here. 35-year-old Edin Dzeko is still the kind of starting number nine. And he's wanted to leave now for 18 months. Henrik Mkhitaryan, after his kind of disappointing career in England... And Pedro, that's the starting front three. And that's what he has to work with right now. Um, but in terms of a comparison, I like Fonseca. There's a certain level of dignity to him um, and a class to him as well that I think doesn't really exist much in football these days. Um, a lot of people asking me if he's the type to just be walked all over. Um, you know, he really took Ed and Dzeko to task and dropped him. And was still able to get, I believe it was uh, like maybe 12, 13 goals from uh, Borja Mayoral on loan from Real Madrid. So, you know, this is a coach who is still totally, totally cap capable of developing and hasn't really been given the opportunity yet. You know, an another point um, as well, his net spend at nearly every team he's he's been at, he's made the team money. And I know that's obviously going to be a good match. <laughs> right? Well, he'll fit in just right with Daniel Levy then. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, we've been told about his um, he's very good at um, coaching a team in an attacking sense he's very good at playing a very attractive football he likes to dominate games very different to the style of football we're seeing under Jose Mourinho um, tell us how that worked for Roma even though are you saying the constraints of the playing um, staff he had available to him you know, was he able to coax like a good attacking football from these players oh ha hands down uh, hands down. I mean, Roma at times are an absolute pleasure to watch. And that's not because 
they have the most talented players available to them. You know, I would I would probably tell you that Roma's most talented player that they have on, on the books there is Nicolo Zaniolo, who's just mm-hmm. done his ACL for the second year running. Yeah. Um, so, you know, not having him available, but, but he was able to bring back Mkhitaryan to this kind of double-digit goal and assist type of season. Um, it, in relation to your question about the attacking style of play, um, he's very, very good at kind of changing. Um, and I did link on, on my Twitter, I did link uh, Tifo Football. I'm sure yeah. you guys are familiar with, mm-hmm. with those guys. Um, I think they've recently collaborated with The Athletic. Um, they did a fantastic video talking about how, you know, he pretty seamlessly was able to go from a 4-2-3-1 to a 4-3-3 to a kind of a a 3-4-2-1, but the kind of, the, the, the wingers kind of come more narrow. He likes to overload that that kind of central midfield part. I think the interesting transition for him as a part of a new Tottenham setup, he's so reliant on fullbacks. And I think that, I mean, I would ask you guys, you guys are going to be more of an authority than me, but Spurs fullbacks last year weren't terrific, right? No, they were awful. So what I'd say to you is, you know, Rick Karsdorp had his best season of his career. And Leandro Spinazzola, I would argue, is one of the better wingbacks in all of the world. And those are very, very heavily relied upon positions for the formation that Fonseca ended with at Roma. I don't know whether he's going to just go, oh, it worked kind of at Roma at the end there, or whether he's going to try a different formation to suit your squad. I'm not sure. You mentioned that um, that you would like to see him start the season ahead of Jose Mourinho. Do you think that's the kind of general consensus of the Roma fan base at the moment in terms of they would have liked to have seen Fonseca carry on? Um, I, I do, but I think what I think people... And, and also, just to give a little background on myself, just to make sure I don't seem like some sort of football fanatic here. Um, I graduated in, in 2020 uh, with a degree in international football business out of, right. okay. out of UCFB. So that's not as if to go like, yeah, so everything I'm saying is like totally spot on. <laughs> I'm just trying to give you an idea of where I'm coming from. Um, if you're a new American owner and you've spent hundreds of millions of pounds to, to be a major shareholder as part of a club and you're willing to spend a bunch of money, you're trying to fill seats to build a new stadium, to not have to share the Stadio Olimpico with Lazio, do you want that to be Paolo Fonseca? whose main success was at Shakhtar Donetsk. And, you know, he won the double in all three of his years at Shakhtar, but you're also playing at Shakhtar. Or do you want Jose Mourinho, who's won Champions Leagues, domestic leagues, 100-point seasons in in Spain? You want that kind of big name going out there. And Mm -hmm. I think that with Fonseca, there was a certain level of understanding of where you know where the new owners are coming from and that he just does not have the for lack of a better phrase sex appeal like we all know that Jose Mourinho has he's a you know Jose Mourinho is a drama queen let's be fair you know? <laughs> um, and, and, and he's he's the guy who's gonna who's gonna want to fill the stadium but from a purely footballing perspective I think Paolo Fonseca is really in the ascendancy and Jose Mourinho is, is quite the opposite in terms of um we, we we talked about his attacking style of play, but things he's been criticised for, especially this season, is defensively he can definitely be found wanting. You've taken Roma have taken a few batterings this season from a few big teams. Where do you think Fonseca maybe is a blind spot in his in his management style, or do, or, or do you think he can improve on? Um. So so one thing that has you know Roma fans pulling their hair out, chewing their nails, uh, it, you know, uh, and this kind of thing is. He is so, so focused on playing out from the back and he creates kind of a, um, a U shape with the wing backs pushing, pushing right, right up. The, um, of the three center backs, the two wider center backs going almost to full back positions, using the goalkeeper to come in next to one of the center backs, which certainly during the latter stages of last season was, was Brian Cristante, who was, who's, you know, a holding midfielder. Um, and what he likes to do a lot of the time is to play out from the back. Um, and when I say play out from the back, I don't mean in kind of a nice Barcelona Man City way. I mean in a kind of like, we're either going to score or we're going to concede because we're going to lose the ball or we're going to kind of bring the opposition team out and then we're going to score a goal. You know, the amount of Roma goals which have had 20, 30 passes and then a tap in within the opposition team's six yard box has been amazing to see. 
But there are those times, especially with young centre-backs, who can be rash, like Roger Banez, Gianluca Mancini, Kambula, and we all know Chris Smalling's not the greatest centre-back <laughs> of all. You know, they can, you know, and guys, I'm not going to lie to you, I was thinking of um, how I can maybe relate to Spurs fans a bit more. Remember Federico Fazio? Yes, we do. He still plays games occasionally for Roma. <laughs> I'm hoping that will give you like a sense of where the Roma squad's at right now. But I guess what I'm trying to say is um, the defensive side, I totally, totally get it. But he can play some of the most incredible attacking football. And it's quite innovative from a standpoint of his overloads are usually right in the centre of the park, just outside the box, um, which, which is why there's that reliance from, from the wing backs out, uh, out wide. Hmm, that's really interesting. I mean, when you're comparing it to maybe a past Tottenham appointment, um, one comes to mind in Maurizio Pochettino, who kind of wasn't really this kind of manager, revered as this manager that he is now. Do you think it's a bit of a similar appointment? I actually really do. Um, I really do. And, and I think what I mean by that is he's so well respected in dressing rooms. Players absolutely love him. Fan bases love him as well, because the thing is, he's not the type of guy to bemoan issues and, and, and that kind of thing. And I think he is going to come in and, and bring his own style in. But what I've made tried to make very clear to people is if it doesn't work out, he's walking into an incredibly difficult job. And I don't think that's just my opinion. I'm sure you guys would share that. I mean, if, yeah. if the top goal scorer and top assist maker uh, in the league, uh, who's the same player, leaves this year, <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then also maybe the right players don't come in. That's, you know, that's kind of worrying. Um, yeah. and, and I think that especially defensively, if, if your fullbacks don't play their part and the centre backs aren't willing to step up, you know, maybe it won't go well. But what I'm trying to say is that I saw a bunch of this stuff from Spurs fans of he got fired and failed at Roma. I, there's so context is the most important thing in football. Correct. And when people miss the context of a situation, um, you know, the understanding must be uh, that actually it's maybe not that guy's fault. And mm -hmm. I, I was responding to a guy, you know, he made six substitutes in the Coppa Italia against Spezia, mm -hmm. which is against the rules. So it, Roma lost 4-2 anyway in extra time, but that would have been an automatic 3-0 loss. But that was a game with two red cards, penalties, injuries galore, you know, this whole thing. So I'm more inclined to, to let him off of some of the issues, um, especially with the squad quality that was there, um, than, uh, than, than not. I just, th there's reason for optimism. I'm fumbling over my words here, I'm sorry. <laughs> there's reason for optimism is what I would say. And do you know anything about, um, obviously you talk about his success as Shakhtar, but um, I, I, people talk about protect, he had um, a job at Porto where he took over from a double winning side and finished third. Do you, do you know anything about um, his uh, role in, in, um, in Porto or not so, much? Um, so so, so that, that year in particular, I don't know a great deal, I'll be honest with you, mm -hmm. to totally level with you. Um, but I think the, the one thing that I do know historically with the Portuguese league is, and you guys know this, so selling league, um, if there's any player of any decent quality, that guy or, you know, whoever is going to be in Spain or England or France, you know, before you know it or Italy before you know it. So that that year in particular, I've seen a bunch of stuff about the players that Porto lost and also some of the signings as well that Benfica made to bring them right back up to kind of challenging and that kind of quality. And you guys know this, managers are scapegoats. And a lot of the time you need to delve a little deeper into the situation um, to, to, to kind of find out the true issues. And unfortunately, people are very short-sighted and they're much, much more likely to just fire the manager than find out what the actual problem is. Oh, really yeah. interesting. Wow. Um, just before I let you go, just tell me, is this going to be a good appointment? Just appease our fans for us that are watching right now. Is this going to be a good appointment or not? Um... I'm I'm gonna say that uh, if it was Conte right, and you got you know, and he got the money he needed, and you could sign Hakimi and yeah. <laughs> you kept Kane and all this stuff, I'd say, oh look out, you know, because Conte for me is the best manager in the world right now. Mm. I really do, you know. That's why I was so excited for Spurs fans. Fonseca is a downgrade from Conte, sure, but I think that if Spurs fans can temper their expectations to kind of that top six-ish range, give him some time and hope that he can bring in the right players and the players can adjust to his style, 
then you could see some great, great things. You know, he, I'll give you, I'll give you a great example for him. He's the kind of guy who wins football matches from Monday to Friday. He doesn't win the football matches on the weekend, right? He's not that type of manager. I know that sounds awful. <laughs> I know that sounds awful. So we're winning the conference league, people. <laughs> but he, he's the type of guy who puts the work in um, from, you know, from Monday to Friday so that you can then win on the weekend. He's not going to be the kind of guy to shout and scream and make some crazy passionate team talk at half time. But the work that he puts in in the training ground and the respect he has from the players is what has him win games. That's why I see similarities with Pochettino. And I just wouldn't rule out it, it, it going well. That's all I'm saying. All right. I think oh, that's wow. definitely some really good insight there. Are you looking forward to facing the prospect of facing a Fonseca Tottenham in the uh, Conference League? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it's funny. I, I was talking with a, with, a, with a friend the other day. Like, I don't know what's, what's more embarrassing. These kind of teams like Tottenham and Roma winning the Conference League <laughs> or whether it's more embarrassing them not winning it. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Where, where do we sit on that, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I think if you ask Jose Mourinho, he'll definitely say not winning it. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> definitely. Um, but look, Jack, um, really, really great to have you on. Really, thank you for your great insight. I'm sure a lot of our viewers will really enjoy it. And if you, if you guys enjoyed what you saw there, go and uh, t follow on Twitter red brood there you go some really good roma insight there and daniel fonseca so thank you very much for coming on yeah no guys appreciate it um one final thing i've got a friend of mine uh, who would absolutely kill me if if he didn't say it he's got a youtube channel um mm. called uh, box to box uh football so if, if anybody wants to wants to come uh, come come check us out and just uh, just have a look there but apart from that I'm rooting for Fonseca. Um, I'm hoping Mourinho gets to spend some money at, at, at Roma, but I'm rooting for Fonseca, seriously. All right, thank you very much, and thank you for coming on, mate. All right, cheers, cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. Bye. All right, that was some really good insight. That some was really, really cool, actually. Really good in De Definitely um, calmed my nerves in terms <laughs> of uh, how um, I was feeling about the potential podium of Fonseca. He seems very pretty um, confident that he's uh, a really good manager and he would have been happy for him to stay on a Roma. So. But that, that's the thing. That's what I was trying to say in, in the live stream we were having before. Like Everything I've seen coming out from any sort of Roma fan all were quite happy with Fonseca. Yeah. And and it was kind of like the cards he was dealt in his in his tenure at Roma was kind of made his job kind of impossible. That's what it was. I I mean when we first saw the news broke, yes, we were very pissed off and quite rightly so because of the names we were linked with, but I think when you delve deeper into it, it's not actually that bad of an appointment. No, I think in terms of what's available and in terms of what we could get, it's probably the best we can do. When you think about it, I can't think of too many options. Except obviously, Conte, uh, like I can't think of too many options who are readily available, ready to come in and can work within the budget. Well, clearly, he can. So, I'm a bit happy about it. But as well, as he said, uh, you know, he relies very heavily on the fullbacks, and that's a big area for us which we need to improve. So, it all yeah. depends on getting the right recruitment, the right people in. Hopefully, he works well with Paratici, and maybe, just maybe, he can be a match made in heaven. And not only does he rely heavily on the fullbacks, but he also very much improves fullbacks, a la what Pochettino did as well mm. when he first came in. And that was very important to us the way he improved Danny Rose, the way he improved Carl Walker. That was basically key to what we did in those couple of seasons. So, if he can kind of maybe not replicate, it but do something of that ilk then maybe we can see something good happening at Tottenham let's hope all right so look there you have it that is everything you need to know about Paolo Fonseca very much thank you to Jack Farr for coming on and giving us his brilliant insight into the former Roma man um, I really hope you do enjoy Jose Mourinho next season or next <laughs> couple of years how long he's there box uh, but we will I'm, I'm pretty sure we will be seeing you in the conference league next year so um, watch out for that everyone if you like the content do smash the like uh, down below leave a comment tell us what you think about the Paolo Fonseca deal like subscribe and comment and as always come, come on you spurs, spurs.